Hello, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about responsive images and how to have them under control. I'm Cristina Chumillas. I'm, the, I'm a designer and front-end developer. Uh, I work at Imbra, a Drupal agency in Barcelona, and you can find me on Twitter as Chumillas or at Drupal.org as Secrina. So the main thing that I'm going to talk about is the basics about responsive images, responsive images in Drupal, and finally, art di direction. The basics, it's not just I'm going to do an, an introduction. It's a really important part for me because I have to say it, I just don't like doing sessions. I just really get super nervous, and I'm here thinking all, this, all these smart people just looking at me and expecting something. So last year I said, okay, I'm gonna talk about something that I really know about it. And I've been doing responsive images for years with Drupal 7 and so on. And I know how to do it. And I started the session and I realized that I was doing responsive images wrong for years. <coughs> So that's why the basics are important. So let's start with some uh, general information. The page weight for the websites has been increasing incredibly during the last year. Just on, from 2015 to the last year, it was one, uh, it was a 10% increase in, of increase. It was almost two megas and a half. And as average for all the websites, so that's incredible. So some just fast facts, uh, our around 60% uh, of the traffic for websites are images, so we have a huge impact if, if we think about responsive images. Uh, images are loaded in, uh, synchronously, so we have to take that into account. And usually, uh, images that we put on the websites are usually too big, so we have a huge uh, part to play there. So here, the main goal is to deliver the highest quality images supported and nothing more. So let's start with the basics. So what we know is, for example, we have two main uh, things here, the author, the person that is doing the website, and the browser. And we have several things that one knows, but the other doesn't know. For example, the viewport dimensions, the person that is creating the website, that is creating, writing the code, he doesn't know how this website is going to be consumed, so he doesn't know the, if it's going to be an iPhone, it's going to be a super retina display, super big, so he doesn't know. But the browser actually knows it because it's displaying it. The image size relative to the viewport, the author knows it because he has designed it or he has coded, he's, he has coded it, so he knows it. And the browser didn't know it, but now with the new, uh, the new things that we are adding with responsive images, he knows it. In this case, it's the sizes attribute. We will see it right now. The screen density, again, the author doesn't know it, but the browser knows. And finally, the source dimensions, uh, if it's 100 pixels or 2,000, the browser doesn't know until he gets the image, so he already has the image. So with the new attribute, SRC uh, set, you can say that to the browser before the browser loads the image. So who has all the control is the browser. This uh, link here is the best um, blog post that I've seen explaining it, and it's amazing. So if you want to learn a little bit more, it's super well explained. And here we have uh, the anatomy of a scaled image. Uh, he, we have here the new attributes. Uh, we have the, the SRC set, the sizes. So let's look a little bit to them. The, the SRC set is 
a way to say to the browser how big are the images that you are going to send to him. So before he loads it, he knows if he is going to need the big one, the small one, so he doesn't have to load all the images, just the one that he needs. And with sizes, what we are doing is explaining to the browser what are the proportions. For example, with a, a width that is bigger than 36 AM, the image needs to be a 33%. So the browser will decide which image has to be loaded. So, well, it's not mobile first, it's actually mobile second, but first because we have the 100 percent, the second, the second value, but it's just like moving the, the media queries to the to the to the sizes attribute. So here is the, the the anatomy of a response uh, of a responsive image scaled. It means the same image. So that's a scaled. So we have the this huge image in the browser. And we have the small image, but exactly the same image on the mobile. So what is our direction? Our direction is changing the image on the mobile. So we actually have different images, not just the same image scaled. And for that, we have picture. So that's the thing that I was doing wrong. I was using picture to, to build all, every one of the, of the responsive images that I was creating for all the projects. So here we have the picture anatomy. We have the, the, the tag, uh, the picture tag, that actually is a container. And then we have the, the, ta the, the, the tag source, where inside we have again the, the SRC set where we can have actually different densities. And for each source, we say where it has to be applied. We have the media, it's like a media query attribute, and it says this source is going to be applied on, on small, for example, this one is from zero pixels to almost 30, uh, 29 AM, and the other one is going to be applied to a bigger one. And finally, we have the fallback, the EMG tag inside the picture as a fallback. And I always need to have a slide for um, Internet Explorer. So here it is, um, just the picture tag and all these attributes work back perfectly in most of the, the browsers, but not in Internet Explorer. And for that, we have picture, uh, picture fill. Uh, it's already built on Drupal, so those that, you're, that are just using Drupal don't have to worry about it. But otherwise, you have to use it. So let's see how to build actually responsive images in Drupal. A little bit of history. On Drupal 7, we have several approaches to, uh, for using uh, responsive images. The first one was uh, using the, actually the same, um, the same modules that are right now in core in Drupal 8. It was the, the, the module RESP EMGs and breakpoints. And I have to say, JL, AES, and Addict made a huge work here because they already built something a lot of years ago before it was actually on a standard and everything and we had this on Drupal a lot of years ago so it's great and it has to be, I want to say it. And we have also some grid modules on Drupal 7 that they were adaptive images and AIES, -I -I whatever. <laughs> Sorry, my English is not the best one. And another one was client-side adaptive images. It, they were all different approaches. So in Drupal 8, we have responsive images. It's actually his name is, uh, his machine name, its machine name is uh, still picture. 
And we have the, its dependencies are breakpoint and, well, image and file and field. And the process for creating a responsive image are these four steps. The first one is creating or importing the breakpoints. Later, creating the image styles. Later on, we create the responsive image itself. And finally, we apply it on views or a view mode or whatever. So let's start with the beginning. Uh, we have to start creating or importing the breakpoints. Breakpoints are created both on themes or on modules. We need to create um, a file that it's called the theme or the module name dot breakpoints dot yaml. And inside this, what we have to do is move these media queries into Drupal so Drupal can read it. Read it. So, for example, for Bartik, we have uh, three uh, breakpoints here. And for each one, we need to place the, the, the name of the, um, of the, of the in, this case, in this case, a theme, and the, the machine name. And for each one, we need the a level, the meta query, uh, the multipliers, and some different properties. So the second step is to create the image styles. And something really important here that I keep saying one, uh, one time and another is we need to plan the image styles. We usually jump next to let's create all the image styles and if we plan them, it's much easier and we will save a lot of time. So let's have this example. We have three break, uh, we have two breakpoints uh, with three, three sizes. And for example, on the tablet, we need, um, we have this design where we have two columns. And for example, the, the width of this tablet is for is, uh, 830 pixels. Then we take from here, take off the margins, the gutter. So we end up with this 770 pixels divided on two images, so we have this size for this image. And we always have to take the bigger, um, the bigger size for this breakpoint and then start dividing from here. So uh, I'm going to explain just a little bit that. There's um, an amazing presentation for, from Mark Drummond. It was in New Orleans, and I was in New Orleans, and I said, I know about responsive images, and I didn't went to that session. And he, it's a one hour session explaining this. So I'm just going to go around it super fast, but it's it really worth it. So what we do is um, we try to use the same image styles, and so we do we create the less image styles that we need. So we try to use the same ones in different, in different um, breakpoints. And he, as he said, there's like a rule where you increase the size of your uh, image style for, uh, with 25% uh, approximately. So you start with, the, in this case, we, you start with a smaller image style that you are going to have, for example, for, for, um, for a mobile. You don't, want, you don't care about anything smaller than that. And you start with the 240 pixels for the mobile, and then you increase at 20%, at 25%, and then you do the same with the other breakpoints. And you, as you can see, you just end up with uh, four um, image styles. You don't have to do all of them. So you actually don't have to do that many image styles. So that's really important. To plan. That's why it's really important to plan the image styles. And also another thing to plan the image styles is the naming. It's important to have a strategy for each project. And I usually follow the, the component ones. I use the, the naming of the, the component that I'm going to create. And I use that name for this image style. I never put the, the sizes uh, on, the, on the machine name. I just put the sizes on the on the, on, the, on the display name. 
And the other approach is by size. You just create a bunch of um, image styles and then you decide. Uh, it depends on your, on your project. I mean, a huge project probably is going to use that. And a small project or a component-based project, uh, this one is much better. It's much clearer. And when you have a list of 60 image styles, this one is easier to find, to find the ones that you want. So the third step will be uh, to create the responsive image itself. Uh, remember, we have the scale image. So for doing so, what we do is uh, we already have the image styles. And then we go here, and instead of picking the, um, the, the uh, 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 breakpoint groups that we already created on our theme, what we do is we, take the, we pick the responsive image that we have here. And this is the default, and this is going to, have to create for us the EMG tag. So we, for example, create the, the teaser one. And instead of picking the demo or whatever we take, we uh, pick the, the responsive image. And here, we enter manually uh, the sizes that we want for our uh, theme, for our uh, component. And later, we pick the image styles that we want. And with that, Drupal is going to create the markup. Of course, we don't forget about uh, um, Internet Explorer. We go, we choose the, the, the image on the view mode or on a view. It's super fast. It's just you don't know that where to pick it, to pick it. And here we can see the example, um, we have this, uh, respond, this, this bunch of, of nodes. And well, you see it's, it's responsive, it's changing. And uh, the important part here is that the markup that Drupal created is the one that we want for the EMG, not the picture one. So as you can see, we have the EMG here. And we have the SRC set um, bunch of, of images. And we have the, the, the sizes attribute later on. Of course, it's all not, not so well structured, but it's already here. So Drupal creates it for us. And then we have picture. We have art direction. We have different images uh, for several devices. So here the difference is that instead of picking the responsive image, what we take is the uh, demo break, group of breakpoints. And for each one, we pick one or several images, image styles as we want. And that's it. So that's the default for Drupal in core. So we already have in core the two ways of doing responsive images, scaled images and um, picture that, that we, can, we could say art, art direction. But what about really giving the control to the final user? Because at the end, he's going to say, what if I have a picture with someone's face in, one, in the right of the picture? I don't want to cut the face of a prime minister or something like that. So we have, um, for example, uh, sorry, for example, no, we have Crop API. Uh, this is the base of the main two modules for creating, for giving control to the final user. Crop API is like the, the, the API for the other two models, so they can uh, give us the control. And the first uh, module that we have here is the image widget crop. It gives us full control for picking for each image exactly what part of the image we want, as you see in the GIF. So, so for doing that, it's a long process. We start creating the crop types. We go to structure, uh, crop types. Here we create a crop type. 
and we have, several, for example, we, we, could, we can have several crop types with the proportions. Then we create the image style where we pick manual crop, and there we pick the, um, the crop that we want for this image. And then we go to responsive images, uh, well, to create a responsive image. Um, later on, we go to, this is the, another step, we have to go to the manage form display, pick the, the, the widget appropriate for it, it's image widget crop. Then we have to, to select for the final user exactly which crops do we give to them. And finally, when we go to the, node, to the creation of the node, uh, the user, what he's going to find is uh, a form where he can pick actually the, the proportion and exactly the place for each image. So, as you can see here, you can just choose whatever is the, the, the exactly good for each image. It's super handful, for example, for a banner, for an image, for a, a, a really important image that you have for a main, for example, uh, a news on, on the homepage or whatever, uh, this typical banner. So as you can see, we have this difference between them. In this one, we picked the, the one. So it gives you full control. It's super cool. Users are going to be super happy for the five minutes, the five first minutes that they, that they use it. After that, they will realize that they have to do it every time that they upload an image. They have to go for each one of them and pick the image, because otherwise they won't have any image. So it's great, but it requires a long implementation and a long effort from the final users. So be wise and use it only if you need it. And the other um, module that is also based on the crop API, on Drupal 7 it goes on like that, but Drupal 8 is inside this media initiative that they, don't, they have done these amazing things. And what it does is that. You just pick the important part and that's all. So, uh, what we have to do is, for example, we create an image style, we give a name, and like with any other one, instead of using a scale and crop, we use focal point scale and crop. We decide the, the sizes for the image style, never on the machine name. And you see we have several images, and for example, if we, want, if we go to add content, well, we will create the responsive image and so on. And for creating content, the only thing that we have to do is to choose the important part. And actually, it gives you a preview from the, the different um, uh, image styles that you have with a focal point applied. So it gives you exactly the same output with a bit of control for the final user, and they don't have to worry, they just have to pick the important part. So it gives you basic air direction, basic control, and actually it really requires low effort for the, from the development team and from the final user. Really low effort, because the only thing that is the difference between creating a responsive image with and without focal point is picking scale and crop or manual, well, focal point scale and crop. That's the only difference. And finally, one more thing will be uh, using the responsive images inside what you see is what you get. Uh, there's this module that uh, appeared after um, 
as an issue in the actually responsive images um, module in the ECQ. And they created this module as a spin-off or something like that. And it gives you this widget inside the what to see what you get. And it's super useful. It still has some issues that actually needs review. The state is that need review, so if you want to try it and say that it works or not, you can do it. And that's all. So the conclusions will be plan your responsive images before implementing it. It's super important. It will save you a lot of time. And use focal point if you don't need full control because it's worth it. And that's all. Thank you. Oops. So there are the sprints if you want to join us on Friday. What do you think? If you want to give feedback and any question. Hi, Hi. thanks for the presentation. I have a question about the breakpoints mm -hmm. in the theme. By default, there are some breakpoints. This is, I mean, I don't know when to use one or... Well, it depends on your design. I mean, you can, uh, if you don't have an, a requirement from the design, you can use whatever you find it's, it works. But sometimes your design is going to break at some point. And it probably is not going to be the same breakpoint than the default ones. So ideally, with the design, for example, if you have two, uh, two columns on, uh, on, a, on a tablet, there, there will be at one point where two columns, is, the images are too big. So you will decide at that point that you want three columns. So that's going to say you where the breakpoint is, not using the, the defaults from Drupal. They're useful if you don't have requirements. So using them by default, it's, it's useful. Hey, um, just wondering, I saw at the beginning uh, there was something about source set. Um, is there also the equivalent of like alt text set? You know, so like for each different image, which you might be pulling through depending on the breakpoint, like you have different alt text because you might want to use entirely different alt text if, if the image is completely different. Alt text, let's see. Yeah, I think, or, yeah, so yeah. for example, you've got SRC set and like those could be I mean, they're three different images, but they could be entirely different content. You know, it might be a road on mobile and then a forest on tablet. So is, is there then like alt set to, to go along with that? Technically, you could. In theory, you shouldn't. I mean, the theory is that that's for a scaled image. That's the same image. So it's going to load a different image. If you want to, to do it manually, you can create the image, a different image. But if you are using Drupal or any other automatic thing, it's not going to be like that. I mean, technically, you can. You can change the image. And actually, if you want a different image, you can use picture, because the theory is that picture is for that. OK. So technically, there's no problem, but you shouldn't. OK, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Just um, about uh, focal point. Um, when you study cinematography and you have to work on uh, shooting um, uh, faces, there is a rule which says that uh, uh, you should have the eye of the person you're shooting, even if you're in uh, extreme close-up or in medium, uh, medium shot, uh, at one-third of the height of the image, meaning you have two-thirds of uh, free space mm -hmm. and one-third on the top. Uh, how would you do such a thing with focal point? You don't. Because you actually, uh, I listen to you and I hear that someone that really knows about photography, 
but who actually is going to decide that is the final user. So is the final user going to know about photography? Then we'll, he will be able to do it because he will know more or less it will be here. But you can automate, automate it. I mean, I'm just giving a proper rule that can be coded. And we all know that all the images that we have are or landscape or obviously food, but that's for Instagram, or uh, people. And what I'm saying is something that comes from 60, 80, 100 years of photography. So just with focal point, you would center the focal point, yes? Yeah, I mean, this focal point is not something really, really scientific. I mean, you just more or less pick that, pick that point and that's all the control that focal point gives you. So focal, focal point, what does is it sacrifices um, this precision for having more um, quick results so the user doesn't have to spend that many time. If you really want uh, full control for that, you're going to have to use our image widget prop that, as you have seen, it really requires a lot of work. Or you will have to build something by your own because it's not already there. You can work over um, the crop API, but I don't know anything that actually automates in that way. That I mean, image widget crop, what it gives you is proportions, and you can move it. As you saw, Finally, what I just uh, need is to focal point and to decide, as we have the focal point, the rule of cropping around the focal point. It, there's nothing focal. automated on that. It's just the user picking the, the, the point. Okay. Sorry. Anything else? I think the big problem is always like the size is attribute because you, you really want to have all this control in CSS, but you have to put some of this information into, into your HTML, and that's uh, super annoying. And if, for instance, you have maybe four pictures, and in the mobile, you have all of them the same size on top of each other, but on desktop, you have one of them bigger, uh, uh, the first one, and the other ones like on the side or something like that. And so you would have to have a different sizes attribute on the first picture than on the others. And it's super annoying to maintain. If you want to change this later, you have to babysit all, all this stuff. And what I was wondering is, I mean, this is not specific to Drupal, this problem. It's just a general problem with this size. Yeah. Would maybe to have some kind of uh, server-side thing on Apache level, which uh, analyzes the page, and then ap ap um, applies all the sizes attributes, and then uh, caches this thing. Do you know of something like this? I don't know some anything like this. I need really sounds like magic for me because it would be amazing having something like that but I don't know anything right now that works like that and that automates it. And okay, another question. Uh, you said you make this um, image style names. Like, what was in... Which? Yeah, just say uh, an example of your image style names. I forgot. What the teaser one? You made? Yeah, okay. So you name them after where you want to use them. but. Is this really useful? Because then you would have like different image styles per uh, um, per thing that you want, to, maybe per view mode or something. And yeah. in the end, you just need some sizes, and then you can reuse them. Or? Exactly. That's the thing. It depends a lot on your project. I mean, if you only have, um, imagine that you have a list of. Um, different content types, and all of them on the teaser appear like that, and you are have, I don't know, five components that are using images. This approach with components is useful because you have everything really organized. But if you really have a huge project with a lot of images and so on, the best approach is this one. Only using, just naming the images by, this, by, by the size they need and then just choosing the right size. And that's, it really depends on the project. Okay. So it not, it, there's not the, the, the best way. It depends. Sure. <laughs> <laughs>
So, yeah, thanks. Um, I was wondering about the alt and the title tags, how to use them best, because I mean, to show up in Google search and have it, then you maybe would want the name of the photographer and everything inside, but I think also for the, um, yeah, all the, what's the best practice now? For showing the, the title or? Yeah, what to use, like alt and title and um, for search, but also then for the alia or like it the. It really depends on the, on on the design, actually, because if it just shows under the image and it doesn't need any theming, we just show the, the, the title uh, field from the image uh, entity under the, 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 the image itself on the markup and that's all. But if, you ha if we have some theming to do there, like for example, it has a background and it's over the image and it appears when you hover and so on. We actually have to create like some fields. If you also want there, the, for example, the year or you have more information, then you have to create fields to create view modes and do some theming on the yeah, tweaks. I was just wondering really about the code and the accessibility and stuff, or if you have like um, screen readers and things, and I read that it's not so good to use too much information in there and... No, actually uh, the image itself, it should actually have the markup in the, in the, in the tag. I mean, uh, it, the EMG tag should have the, the alt attribute and the, the title attribute. And they don't have to be the same that you are showing. I mean, they, ha they should be the same text, I mean, the same, the same val value, but they don't have to be the markup itself. I mean, Drupal gives you the control to, to make it appear twice. So the also, I was wondering if you have like photographer website and you want on Google to search for the images and then you want the name of the photographer as well in there. But for screen readers, it would be annoying if on each image I have like the same repetitive da 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 yeah. shot in Vienna right. 2017 da da da. So I haven't faced <laughs> this situation actually, and it would make sense to really use someone that knows which parts are going to be read and how to maybe hide for mm -hmm. the screen readers the, the, the duplication. Yeah. So I guess I will go to a, someone that really knows about that before just launching the website for sure. Yeah. Thanks. Anything else? Thank you for listening. <laughs>